Okay, I just started laughing because of this quote and I had to share it with you. I don't know why this made me laugh so much, but it says, Thus the Quendi do not live slowly, achieving in 144 years only what a mortal could do in one year. They are not like tortoises, moving ponderously while time flickers past them. Actually, they move and think rather swifter than men and get more into any given length of time than any man could. <laughs> I'm not sure why, but that just made me laugh. I loved that comparison. Hello, welcome to a new vlog. Let me just grab my mug. Okay, we're ready. <laughs> welcome to a new vlog, everyone, in which I will be trying to finish all of my current reads because I need to start fresh in February. <laughs> we have a lot of exciting plans this year, a lot of book club picks, a lot of read-alongs are happening, and I just want to start fresh for the next month. So, for this vlog, my main goal is to finish all of my current reads, which I will now show you what they are. We have these three beautiful books. So the first one, which is also the shortest one by far, is Silas Marner by George Eliot. I'm actually been reading this one with Lucy, which is always so lovely. And I have started it already. I actually started this one during my reading sprints with Malena and Sarah. And I'm liking it so far. I can already tell that it is written by George Eliot, no doubt about it. I think she gives so much personality to the characters. She is incredible at writing them and I love her writing style so much. So I am pretty sure I'm going to enjoy this one a lot. I've only read 17 pages, so I'm this far into it, but I'm also listening to the audiobook. The simple fact that this follows the relationship between an older man and a child immediately <laughs> interests me. I love books that explore that type of relationship. So I've said this before, but it gives me Heidi vibes, even though they are probably very different stories, but it is that same type of dynamic that I usually adore. So that's the first one that I'm gonna attempt to finish. Then of course we have The Lies of Locke Lamora. This one <laughs> I'm definitely finishing very soon because I only have a couple of hours left of the audiobook. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm loving this. This has... Um, it has a lot of twists and turns. <laughs> I do... I will say it was a little hard to get into this, even though I, I liked it immediately. But I get a few reviews that say this is a little hard to get into because it is slow-ish and you're not really sure about what's happening. You don't know what the author is doing, but the more you read, the more you figure it out, and it's brilliant. I don't think this will be a story that everyone will love, also because it has a lot of flashbacks as well, where we get to follow these characters when they met, when they were just young kids. I love those chapters. A lot of people don't seem to like them, they're some of my favorites. <laughs> I adore them. And again, just seeing how their relationship developed from one moment to the other. I just, I love it so much because it is very character focused, but at the same time, it is giving you such an exciting plot with a lot of twists and turns again. And I, I cannot wait, seriously, I cannot wait to finish this one and continue on with the series. But first, I do have a few priority reads, hence why I'm trying to finish all the books now and one of the biggest reasons is so I can read the sequel immediately because I, I need it. <laughs> I just know I need it. I do want to give a trigger warning for some brutal death scenes. I just, well not just, but recently I did read one which was quite gruesome, so just be aware of that. And the language is a little, I guess you could say, sometimes it has a bit of a dry sense of humor, which I love, and the banter between the characters. I love Locke and John, which are the main characters, and I adore them. You know, it is this little fellowship, it's just like we have in the Lord of the Rings and in the Mistborn series, and I'm sure so many other ones, but I love that. I love when we get to follow this group of people, who are not the best people, by the way. You are following very... Um, 
morally great characters here. You could even say they are bad people and I could completely understand where you're coming from, but also getting to know their backgrounds and what, why they act this way. I just, I'm loving it so much and I know it will not be for everyone, but I, I'm really invested and I just cannot wait to continue with the series. So anyhow, this will be finished very soon, I'm sure. And then of course we have the Nature of Middle-earth, which currently does not have the dust jacket because whenever I read hardbacks, I just take them off, but look how beautiful it is. And this one, I thought it would take me much longer to get through, but I'm actually flying through it. It has a lot of curiosities about Middle-earth. Um, when I say a lot, it is truly a lot. <laughs> it explains how time works and how these characters age depending on their race and everything. At a certain point, it will talk about the character's heights and we have... Whoa, th those were a lot of numbers. What is that? It's talking about the number of births and everything by year. So you see, <laughs> it is a very detailed book, but I'm just fascinated by it. I just started it this morning and I'm already on page 50 um, because I find it incredibly fascinating. Obviously, I don't think this is a book that you would only read once. I think it's one of those books where you can, you know, just pick it up once in a while and read a chapter or two or go to a specific session that you are particularly curious about. So it's not a novel exactly that you would read front to back, you know what I mean? But that's exactly what I'm doing <laughs> because we will be discussing it. Um, I will be talking a little bit about it with Lucy and Kira for the Fellowship of the Read-Along and we'll also just have a big cozy catch-up and Q&A and everything. So yes, it's just a book filled of details and random information and curiosities about this world that Tolkien created and I love that you can see that this you know this was truly his baby wasn't it because the amount of thought and love that he put into it is incredible I <laughs> I think it's so beautiful how you can love something this much especially your own creation, how you can dedicate so much time and effort and passion to it. It's beautiful. And this book really shines because of that. It might not be, maybe I will say that, it might not be the most, <laughs> I don't even know, entertaining read, I guess, um, because it doesn't exactly have a plot or anything. It, it's almost like a study book for Middle Earth, which makes it so interesting to me. Um, so yes, I'm really hoping to finish this one as well, but yeah, I'm loving it. I'm enjoying all of my current reads. So these are the three that I'm hoping to finish during this vlog and I'm very excited. Um, actually, these are not my only reads. Where is it? <laughs> Wait a second. Okay, here it is. <laughs> Hold on. I'm also currently reading this beautiful book. This is The Eight Life, which is our current pick for my Patreon book club. And I also film an exclusive reading vlog for each book that we pick. So that's also what I am currently working on. I am filming an exclusive vlog for this book, which is massive. <laughs> this is over 900 pages, I believe. Yes, this is also a book that I will be reading at the same time, but most of my thoughts will be for that separate reading vlog. But of course, whenever I finish it, I can also include a few of my thoughts on a future vlog. But yes, those are all of my current reads and I'm excited, especially because, well, this is not exactly a good thing, but today I was supposed to have classes during the afternoon, but unfortunately one of my teachers got sick, so he won't be able to go. Um, and yes, he got the thing, <laughs> which apparently YouTube doesn't like me to say, so he got the thing. Um, he's doing okay as far as I know, but you know, he has to, of course, be at home. So unfortunately today I will not be having classes, which means that I have a more free day. Of course, I will have to do some work, but other than that, I'm pretty free because my afternoon will not be as busy. So I guess today is all about curling up with all of these wonderful books and trying to finish all of them. I would love to finish them between today and tomorrow. That would be amazing. So let's see if that happens. But let me know what you all are currently reading and if you've read any of these books. <laughs>
are here. I ordered this a few weeks ago, I think. Oh my god, I'm so happy they finally got here. So let's see. Okay, here you go. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay, so the first one. Oh my gosh, it looks so pretty. It is We Are Not Free by Tracy Chi. Look at it. It's amazing. I love that the cover continues on the back as well. It's such a cool effect. Oh my gosh, I love that. Um, this is our current pick for the Tea Leaves Book Club. We are going to read this one until the end of February. And it says, what do you do when the only home you've ever known is taken from you? Following the attack on Pearl Harbor, 14 Japanese-American teens find their lives irrevocably changed. As World War II roars on around them, these teens must ask themselves what it means to be free Americans when their own country has imprisoned them. Oof. This will be such a heartbreaking read, I can already tell. Um, but I do miss reading books, historical fiction, like this one. And I've never read a book that's from the perspective of Japanese-American people, I don't think. Um, so I'm really excited to see how this book will handle the subject. I haven't seen a lot of reviews for it, but it does sound incredible. So I cannot wait to get to this one. Even though, again, it will probably destroy me. But we'll see. At least I have it now and I'm so excited. It also has a few fun elements it has a few illustrations like this one. Oh, pretty look at that so beautiful I didn't know it was such a short book either so it should be pretty easy to read in a way and really hard on the other but yes oh I love this I love the art on the front look at that it's so beautiful oh my gosh okay so yes this is our current pick for the tea leaves book club so if you'd like to join us feel free to do so as always of course the live show should be on my channel at the end of february probably or around the start of march so stay tuned for that of course and then the other book that i got oh my god i can't believe i finally own this it's so beautiful it's so beautiful oh my god okay <laughs> This is Sun of the Shadows by Juliet Murillier. I can't believe I finally have this. Look at it. Oh, it's so beautiful and tiny as well. I love these editions. Usually I don't like smaller books, but for these ones, it just works. This is the second book in the Seven Waters series. The first one being Daughter of the Forest, which I read a while ago <laughs> and absolutely adored. I love Juliet Murillier's books. I've since then read one of her other series and I'm looking forward to continuing with this one because she immediately became one of my all-time favorite authors. I love her works so so much. Oh my gosh, history and fantasy, myth and magic, legend and love come together in this powerful and entrancing romance. I cannot wait to read this. This is definitely one of my priorities for this year, especially because I am looking forward to reading more fantasy and Juliet Morillier. <laughs> is definitely on my list. I do have some other books that I do want to finish before this one, mainly all the ones that I'm currently reading, of course, but this, oh my gosh, I'm hoping to read it as soon as possible. Like, I don't even know, next month maybe? Just, oh, look at it, it's so gorgeous, look at that, it's so pretty. Oh my gosh, it's just, oh, it's beautiful. I, I, <laughs> I'm so excited. I do think this follows the kids from the protagonists of the first book. I'm not sure, but I don't know. I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna love it. So, <laughs> I'm so happy. Here's my little Juliet Murillier collection. So I've read all of these. This is Daughter of the Forest, the one that I was talking to you about. The first book of this series. Look how stunning they look together. Look at that. Oh my these are definitely some of my favorite covers ever <laughs> of a fantasy series, but just books in general, you know, look at that. Oh my gosh, look at the detail. It's so inspired by nature as well. And the tones you can see that are pretty different. Oh my gosh, I'm truly so excited. So let's put both of these together, of course. Then I also own the Blackthorn and Grimm trilogy, which is one of my all-time favorites as well. And because of that, I just want to read everything that Juliet Marillier ever wrote. <laughs> Oh 
And then this one will go to my historical fiction shelf. So, <laughs> this week turned out to have a dramatic turn of events. I am currently on isolation for the next few days because it finally got to me. <laughs> I was going to get my booster next Friday actually, but not anymore, I guess. Um, I'm not sure exactly how I got it, probably at work or something, but you know, I'm just gonna I'm not going to think too much about that, it's, it's really not worth it. Um, but I thought I would give you this update because it might be helpful, I don't know if you are going through it as well or if you'd like to know how it is. Of course it will be different depending on each person, but for me, I started feeling some mild symptoms on Friday, it is currently Monday. And Saturday and Sunday were pretty awful for me. I couldn't stop coughing, I had loads of headaches and nausea as well. It was very rough because of that, especially yesterday, I couldn't even get out of bed. <laughs> I basically slept throughout the entire day, I didn't even eat much. Um, so yes, overall I just felt very, very tired and everything hurt. Um, it was just like a very bad cold, you know, so I did decide to take the test and confirm it on Saturday um, Because it was also sudden and I thought if this was just a cold it would probably be a very Slow progression um, with all the symptoms, but because it was so fast and everything came at once I decided to just confirm it and I did a test on Saturday and there it was a positive result <laughs> So here we are right now um, this vlog will probably be very late because of that, I apologize for it, but I'm gonna try and keep filming for it and editing because right now I do feel a little better. At least I got out of bed. <laughs> we need to celebrate the little victories, right? And I did get out of bed, I made my bed, I took a shower and I got dressed. I even have my rings and everything because I don't feel like myself without them. Um, and I am drinking coke <laughs> because it is the only thing that I can handle right now, which is a little sad. I wish I was drinking tea, but the most important thing is to listen to my body and what it wants. So right now it is craving Coke and it's making me feel better. So that's what I'm going with. But yes, I would have liked this vlog to be up on Sunday, but that will not happen obviously, um, but that's okay. We are taking things slow this week. I'm sure you all will understand, of course. I just wanted to give you this little update and tell you what's going on because I don't want to hide it obviously it just it happened so I thought I would include it in my vlogs because I do want to be honest with you all like I said I am feeling better right now still not great but I'm gonna try and work and do just my normal life in the best possible way that I can but obviously if I need to rest I'm gonna try and listen to my body and just take my time take things slowly so I can recover fast and hopefully by the end of next week things will get back to normal but yes if you are going through it as well or if you went through this already then that's okay of course and it's not your fault again I don't think it is worthy um, to think about why you got this, when you got it, because it can happen to anyone. I was always careful, but it still got to me, so, you know, it's okay. It will happen eventually to everyone, I think, so I might as well just get it over with and then I can gain some more immunity, hopefully, after this, so that's 
um, the positive side, I guess, which I am trying to focus on that right now. Um, just try and see the positive things. Since I do have to stay home for the entire week, at least, I'm gonna try and just enjoy my time here at my space. Of course, it will be hard to not see my family and not see my pets, which is killing me because I can hear them walking in the house and I do wanna hug them and I can't and that hurts me. But it's okay, um, we are currently at our countdown. I have a few more days, of course, so five or six days, depending on how I'm feeling on next Saturday, but we'll see, it will go fast, that's what matters. And in the meantime, since I'm home, um, I'm gonna try and film different things as much as I can, because that is a big distraction for me. I love doing this so, so much. So. I might as well take this time and try to create as much as possible for all of you. Um, but yes, if I take more time to have videos ready, then you know why. <laughs> right now I'm gonna do some self-care time. What I'm gonna do is to paint my nails because they're not... Um, I haven't painted them in a while, so I'm gonna do that. And also listen to my audiobook while I do that, because I only have a little bit left of The Lies of Locke Lamora and that ending is killing me. <laughs> Okay, apologies if I look super tired, that's because I am. <laughs> I'm feeling better overall, fortunately, and I'm so grateful for that, but this feeling of being tired all the time is the worst for me, because I hate waking up and immediately feel like <laughs> I cannot do anything during the entire day. Um, however, that's not true, so we keep moving forward, and I did end up finishing the book. <laughs> Oh, I finished The Lies of Locke Lamora. I'm here to share with you a few of my thoughts. I'm still trying to gather all of my feelings, but I did write a few notes on my little bookish journal. It is so pretty, look at that. Um, it was a gift from my mom last year and I decided to finally start using it more regularly. But yeah, I this book, I need the sequel immediately. First of all, I love that this is a story that shouldn't have worked for me, not really, because it is very fast-paced. There's not really a lot of time where you can stop and breathe for a second because something is always happening. It is extremely fast-paced. And yes, we do get a few flashback sections, like I believe I told you previously, so we get to follow some more slower-ish parts of the story, but they're not that slow, actually. Um, but yes, we get to see these characters growing up. Those were actually my favorite parts, I think, which I'm not sure is what the author was going with, but that's what happened with me. Um, I loved those sections. I loved the entire book, obviously, but those where we get to see these characters growing up and where they come from and their relationship starting to build and become this beautiful thing. I loved it so much and my battery is dying. Hold on. <laughs> All right. Um, so yes, this book, like I was saying, it shouldn't have worked for me really because usually I'm not a big fan of very fast-paced stories because I can't keep focused, you know? When there's a lot of action happening or fight scenes or a heist or something like that and there's so much going on at the same time, I lose focus usually and I cannot really remain really connected with the story. 
but there's something about Scott Lynch's prose that just grabbed me the entire way. Something that I really loved about this book, which is something that I missed seeing in stories and in fantasy especially, is that the stakes are very high because these characters take very risky decisions, which can come with very dangerous consequences. And I love that we get to have that payoff as well, where the characters get to see what happens if they do follow their original plan and make these very dangerous decisions and sometimes things go wrong and I felt that the entire way throughout this entire story the stakes were incredibly high and I love that and that made me feel genuinely nervous because I know that this author is not afraid to make this world feel as real and brutal as possible so anything can happen at any moment and I love that I said before, I think, that he can have a very dry sense of humor, but it just... <laughs> I say that in the best way possible because it just works in this world, which is so immersive, by the way. Scott Lynch manages to have a very over-the-top and descriptive and unique prose style that is also quite grim and dark at points and it just works. It works in this world. It just makes sense and, you know, because we are, after all, following thieves <laughs> and not so great people. These are not exactly good guys. We are not following your typical heroes, you know? It's almost as if this little group lives in their own little world where they do care so much about each other, but they're also not afraid of being brutally honest with each other when they mess up. And I just love that dynamic. It feels so genuine to me. And that goes to one of my favorite parts of this book, which is it's about a found family. And I just, it that's one of my favorite things. When you see this such a strong friendship between a group. I love that. <laughs> a lot of my favorite books and stories in general have that when you have a very close group who care so much about each other and are not afraid to be honest and frontal with each other when someone messes up and that's a beautiful thing to see. It can get very <laughs> violent because of that but it's amazing and I feel like those are the best friendship groups, you know, when there's not, um, I don't know, when everyone is so protective of one another, they want to protect each other so much but also there's enough respect that they let every single one of this group just go ahead and make mistakes, you know? And that's lovely, we truly get to know these characters very well, especially Locke and John, which are the main characters, I would say, and their relationship, their, their brotherly relationship is one of my favorite things, and I love that we get to see how it started, and it just... <laughs> I came very close to crying in a few scenes of this book, which sounds very weird because I wouldn't say it was intended exactly during those moments, but it became very emotional and that's probably because of how genuine this relationship felt and again, that's one of my favorite things, so it feels like a very rewarding satisfying reading experience. Also, I love how there's magic in this world but you never know exactly how it's going to play out because it depends on who uses it and magic can be quite bad actually. It just again depends on who uses it and for what and you never know exactly what's going to happen next. It is quite unpredictable but very rewarding at the end because you get to see the results of so many things <laughs> playing out. So yes, it's just, it's an amazing story and I feel like the more I think about it, the more I like it. It was almost a five star for me. I still think the entire series as a whole might become an all-time favorite, but the reason why this didn't really get five stars for me, which it doesn't mean anything really because I still adored this book to pieces, but I... The author made some choices that I'm not sure, I don't know how it will move on from here. Um, it's hard to explain without spoiling anything, but I'm not sure exactly how a few plot points here will now move on to the sequel. I don't know why he decided to do it this way, and so I think I will only be able to appreciate a few aspects of this book once I read the sequels and see how... what... 
<laughs> what will happen next basically um but that's a very personal thing i feel like as well as the pacing i feel like the pacing sometimes didn't work exactly for me mainly because of the action scenes i feel like because i did like the past section with the flashbacks so much that sometimes i didn't exactly want to go back to the present and also sometimes scott lynch would just create a flashback suddenly when we were in the middle of a very important action scene and sometimes that was too much <laughs> i actually kind of liked it it was very twisted of him but i actually liked it the problem for me was because i liked the past section so much that then when we went back to the present it felt very so fast and so rushed which again is not necessarily a bad thing it's just a personal preference but um other than that it's truly some other choices that he did that i am waiting to see how they will play out in the sequels which i do want to read right now <laughs> and i do plan to read the second book at least very soon because i got it as a gift from my friend sierra and that was so kind of her so i do have the second book i am planning to read it as soon as possible um but yes i just i loved it it is incredible i again i i think i said this before but i don't think this is a story that everyone will love i didn't think i was gonna love this this much because usually i do not like fast-paced stories i am much more of a character driven person i like to take my time with people and see you know their dynamics their relationships spend time with them even doing just your normal day-to-day -day life things um but this was so well done <laughs> and it completely worked for me so yes i really liked it and if you also like very adventurous stories that will keep you at the edge of your seat and also with such an incredible found family then i would give this one a try the audiobook is great as well so Overall, this was incredible. I cannot wait to read the sequel and I am so happy that I finally read this book because I've seen it recommended by so many people almost, well, yes, practically since I started booktube, which is crazy. I've seen this everywhere and it has always been in my mind and now that it's finally done, I'm so happy. <laughs> now I'm gonna try and rest for a little bit, go back to my books because I'm actually almost done with my two other reads as well, which is exciting. Um, but yes, I need to rest for a little bit. Also, I'm just, sorry, I'm looking at my desk and I don't know whether to cry or laugh, but I guess I'm laughing, so that's what we're going with. But <laughs> it looks like both a kitchen and a pharmacy right now because it's filled with medication and food. <laughs> that my family has been so kind to bring me every single day um so it is you know we have to laugh in the middle of <laughs> this situation i guess um but yes i'm grateful because i'm feeling better fortunately just really really tired <laughs> all right i'm getting all cozy in order to give you one last update because I did end up finishing both books. So I did finish Silas Marner by George Eliot and The Nature of Middle Earth by J.R. Tolkien, which should have taken me a long time to read, I feel like, but it proved to be so much easier <laughs> than I thought it would be because I just had a great time with it. It's so much fun to read despite it having a few, you know, more academic-ish sections i would say like i said previously it's not exactly a novel it's the type of book that you can just go back to at any point in any topic that interests you particularly or that you're curious about because it does have so much information about the nature of this world both in the physical aspect but also when it comes to its essence and how it works and it's fascinating to go through at least for me it was if you are a fan of Tolkien already i would recommend you to have this book on your shelves and just browse through it whenever you like. Obviously this is not a good introduction <laughs> to his works, this is more of a book for everyone who loves Middle Earth already and just wants to learn more. There are a lot of themes here that I feel like Tolkien always talks about in his books, such as the concept of evil, what it truly looks like and what it means to have a true free will, what you can do with it and how it can change you as well. I loved reading about the concept of time. Um, there were a lot of calculations here 
and i feel like tolkien was having a bit of a crisis when making all of these calculations which is quite funny to me and i did laugh throughout a few passages of the book because at a certain point i'm not sure i even understood what he was talking about anymore but it was still interesting to see that a lot of races are not exactly immortal, they just seem to be because they age very slowly. We talk about the elves' marriage and when they can conceive babies and everything, so there's a lot of curiosities like that that just make the world feel alive, you know? You get to learn about some of the characters' heights. So yes, for me, it was a very fun book to read. And of course, I will want to get back to it, um, to read a few sections that I might want to learn more about again, or just to remind myself about a few details that are here, because this is quite a dense book in the sense that you do get a lot from it. So just take your time with it and have fun because that's really the purpose of this book. Um, but yes, I really enjoyed reading this one. It's a little hard to rate it, right? But it was such a nice reading experience for me. I think, I guess I'm gonna give it four stars maybe because it was an enjoyable experience and I'm happy to say I finally finished it. Oh my gosh. That's amazing, I'm so happy and now I can put the dust jacket back on which is gorgeous and it's going right to my Tolkien shelf which I love. And then Silas Marner. This is a very charming sweet story but it didn't I didn't find it remarkable or gripping enough for me to consider it a new favorite exactly I think I would give it probably a 3.5 stars because it does still have a lot of merit of course and George Eliot's writing is beautiful as always she has a very honest and insightful way of talking about people and how they can become their own worst enemies they can become their own downfall and she does a brilliant job as always doing that character study i was expecting this to be a completely different story which doesn't mean anything obviously but you know the synopsis promised me one thing and that whole plot <laughs> only happened throughout the end of the story which is fine because it is still a good solid book i just was a little disappointed by that but it's very sweet, it's very charming, and I was not expecting this to be about a man who was completely wronged and unfairly treated by society, which is interesting because at first I was not sure if we were supposed to root for him, but it became very clear after a while what George Eliot was doing. And this is also a pretty big commentary on the privilege and excessive wealth of some classes over others, over other people, because of the circumstances as well. We are following a rural England in the midst of the Industrial Revolution, which comes into play a lot in this novel. At certain points it felt like I was reading an historical fiction, which was something that I didn't see coming and it was very interesting to read about. Another aspect that <laughs> grabbed my attention is that in order for George Eliot to criticize these disparities between classes and the excessive privilege and how harmful that can be for the poor or for the people who live a more simple, humble life, in order to do that, she kind of romanticized the past a little bit, which I found interesting because isn't that exactly what we do as well? We often forget about the horrible things <laughs> that happened in years past and almost glorify them, which is almost a defense mechanism on our part, right? In order to criticize the current state of things. Um, which I found interesting, because that's exactly what George Eliot does a bit as well. She describes the English countryside landscapes as ideal and beautiful and peaceful and she creates this big contrast against technology and all these advancements in science and everything. So yes, there's a lot of those elements here which then will be relevant to Silas life of course and it was very sweet to see how it seemed like he had lost everything in his life but then suddenly he found a new purpose and that was lovely. Um, but yes, I found it a good, solid book, it just didn't have such a big impact on me. And it's strange because if you ask me which book I think is the best introduction to George Eliot's works, 
I would still say it would be middle March. Despite this being a much shorter novel, I feel like you get to see George Eliot really shine when you read something like middle March. So I don't know, maybe that's just me. I still liked it, of course, and I am looking forward to reading more books by her. Next on my list, is maybe Adam Bede because I do also own that one but let me know if that's a terrible choice and if I should go with other book by her <laughs> But yes, I am so happy I was able to finish all of these books, especially during a bit of a harder time. Um, and of course, I still hope that this vlog was enjoyable for you to watch. I really hope you're all doing very well. As always, let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. And I would also love to hear what you are currently reading or any books that you've been loving recently or anything else that has brought you joy recently. I hope this start of the year is proving to be wonderful for all of you and for now I'm gonna leave you and try to work on some more videos that will hopefully be coming soon. <laughs> we'll see how I'll feel in the next few days but I think everything will be okay. Um, but yes, anyhow, I am sending you all the love, a big big hug and I will see you hopefully very soon on my next video. Bye everyone! Thank you.